for me, it actually is best for me to do homeschooling because the type of career that I want to do, you know, I want to be a businessman. Mm -hmm. And they don't quite teach that, but I do plan on going to college to get my business degree. So okay. it just depends on what you're doing, you know, and how dedicated you are. Yes, indeed. So uh, this is Expeditiously. I am your host, Tip T.I. Harris. And here at Expeditiously, man, we have conversations that affect the culture, the community, and the generation. And we have those conversations with people who are most relevant to the discussion. Now, when I say the generation, you probably don't know or won't expect which generation I'm talking about because our next guest, uh, he hails from Jackson, Mississippi, began showing signs of talent by the age of two while breakdancing to his father's songs. Uh, at age four, while going over colors with his with his dad, he wrote a song named Crayons. That was clever. He released his first single at the age of six. The single was well received and was followed up with successful singles uh, like Crank It and Me and My Daddy, and also Bank Clothes. Um, he's performed at the Essence Festival. He's made appearances on CNN and the likes of the Ellen DeGeneres show. I know him well, well, well by Hanging outside the gate of my house <laughs> with a sign that says, I'm looking for T.I. We'll get into that a little later. And also, he kind of stumbled into the role of an activist while at a mall and, uh, uh, and while he was accosted by a police officer who, who alleged that he was uh, trespassing and selling items when he was really... Uh, uh, passing out his CDs with permission from store owners within the mall. Uh, he is he, he has cleared his name from that situation and made it here to join us here expeditiously. Welcome to the show, Mr. Corey Jackson. How you doing? Yeah, I mean, what's Good going on, here. bro? Man, man, I'm glad to have you, bro. Um, man, I've known you for quite some time, you know what I mean? Uh, and I've known you to be nothing but an upstanding, well-mannered, uh, uh, educated, very well-articulated young man. Um, now, now first I met you, I seen you and your pops and your family, y'all was posted up outside my house. You had, you know, you had signs saying you was looking for T.I. And of course, you know what I'm saying, I don't, I don't really come outside and I don't really mix and mingle with people. A lot of people come outside my gate, man, you know what I'm saying, since it's been on TV or whatnot. Um, but you had the, 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 the tenacity uh, to set out on a voyage, a quest, if you will, for, all the way from Jackson, Mississippi. How old were you when you started this? I started my campaign at six years old. Okay, and it's a campaign. I called it a quest. It well, was... you know, it, it was really a quest and a campaign. Cause, okay. You know, I was looking for you, but, you know, it was a four-year journey. Uh-huh. So, you know, it, it, it went with a, it was like a roller coaster, you know. It went with a lot of ups and downs, a right. lot of lessons taught. And, you know, along the way, I met a, a lot of good people who I still have relationships with to this day. Right. So I just like to call it a journey, you know, it was a lesson at the same time. That's right. And you say you started this lesson at what at, at what age? At six years old. Six years old. You just decided I want to go meet T I. I'm going I'm going to go find T I. Well, I would say what what a whole mentality of finding T.I. came from. We we could go back to when I was four years old. Okay. At that time, of course, I didn't know too much about the music scene, but I was always <laughs> hearing the name T.I., Tilt, King of the South, yeah. Hustle Man. And I always heard your music because my mama, she was the biggest Tilt fan. Right. And my pops, he really respected you, and he liked how you carried yourself. Right on. So from four to six years old, you know, I was updated on who T.I. is, why they called you the Hustle Man. Okay. And Go Rubber ahead. band man, I guess they call me hustle man too every time. You know, from town from town to town, from time to time. Both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for reminding me of that. Oh I no problem. That. You know what I'm saying? No, you, I can't you, forget it. Hey man, on these journeys that we all have, you know, just like you have your journey, I've had my journey, and you know what I'm saying. You you, the things you tend to forget along the way. You know what I'm saying. So thank you for reminding me of such. You know what I'm saying. The 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 minutia of <laughs> hustle hustle man. Yes, sir. Um, now, first of all, I'm honored to have you, you know. Uh, I think you could be, you could be the youngest guest 
ever on Expeditiously. How old are you exactly? I'm 13 years old. 13 years old. Well, yes, I think sir. Maj- I think Major was on one time, just passing through. He didn't speak much, and he wasn't like an official guest, you know what I mean? He just like talked. He did a cameo, you know what I'm saying, like yeah. hi and bye. Uh, I want to start off by talking about your talent first, and then we can get into your life story because I think by 10, you'd already had like a very traumatic, high profile experience. But what got you into music and made you interested in the industry of music to begin with? Well, it all started from my pops. He was doing music at this time. We were on uh, Cronrail Street, you know, Shady Oaks, and he had a studio right beside the bedroom. So, you know, I went to sleep, the music, I woke up, the music. Okay. So, you know, it's kind of like something that was bound to happen. I really just was able to gravitate and get a hold of the music from him mm. doing it first. Mm. Okay. And uh, what was the thing? What was what was the thing about the music that you identified with the most? What was it that drew you into the world? I have to say, you know, I always have an interest in whatever I do. I always want to be the best at it. Okay. And, you know, when I first got into music, it wasn't about just being a recording artist because I wasn't just making tons of songs. You know, I didn't have a bio of 100 songs. Man. And I still don't really do that now, you know. I just go into the studio and I just make great music, you know. I, <laughs> I do my best to uh, make hits, you know. That's what I like to do. <laughs> and, you know, that's just my thing. You know, I take my time. And, you know, right. I like to master my craft. So whatever yeah. I'm doing, I want to be the best at it. But the real reason why I got into music is because where I'm from, you know, being a recording artist, me, somebody like Tip, going on this four-year journey, it's something that was thought to be impossible. Mm. So what I wanted to do is motivate the youth and oh. show them I, I've done it, you know. You I wanted started to motivate six. the youth. That was your motivation. Your motivation yes, was motivating the youth yes, as sir. a youth. You know, something that I learned on my journey, you know, I learned this from one of my good <laughs> friends, Will Smith. You know, he taught me, whatever you're doing, <laughs> he taught me this right here. He said... Whatever you're doing, make sure you're doing something that can improve lives, whether it's motivational speaking yeah. or if you're doing your music, right. doing something, do something that somebody else can relate to that's right. and they can take from it. And that's something that I realized that you were doing, you know, with your music. You know, people can go back to your music, even if you're not living through it right now, there right. is somebody who's living through it and they can yeah. take knowledgement from what you've done, how you've turned your life. And at the same time, it, it has done like a trickle effect, you know, like a chain reaction. At the same time, you've improved your life and the people around you. Mm. And that's something that I really look up to because, you yeah. know, along that way, you've motivated many people. Well, thank you so very much, man. You say you learned this from your buddy, your good buddy, Will Smith. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> good friends on the legend. Yeah, man. Hey, man. So you found yourself in mighty, like, like great company. Yes, sir. You know, it's all just thanks to the, you know, God having his hands on everything. You know, he he did. He puts different people in different places in my life when I need them, you know, different vassals, you know, that can help me in this certain time and place in this point. Yeah. Now, the music, uh, interest in music came before the journey. Yes, sir. So first you had an interest in music and then you decided I'm going to go find this guy named T.I. Well, the reason why I did that is because at the age of six years old, that's when I put my first song out, had my first CD. It only had that one song, Colin Crayons, and I sold 50,000 plus of that. Whoa, you 50, sold 50,000 copies at six years old? Yes, sir, but it was from traveling city to city, state to state, just purely hand-selling my music. 50,000 CDs, man, that's more than, I mean, look. A lot of people ain't selling. Somebody dropped this week that didn't sell 50,000 CDs, so... That's dope, bro. Well, you know, it all just comes with, you know, dedication. Mm. You know, I have my five keys. I like to call them the you, five whoa, whoa, whoa. keys. You say you got five kids. No, five keys. Oh, okay. You know, I like <laughs> I was about to say, God kid. damn, Corey. What, what have I been doing fast, with my life? Man, you moving too fast. Oh, what have I been doing? You dig what I'm saying? But I would have known what you were doing. But <laughs> we ain't going to. Listen, okay, go ahead. Let's. But another uh, conversation for another day. Let's go. I'm gonna keep that one with you. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah let's. But that's like between I was us. Saying, we gonna go on, move on to yeah. the next. What were you gonna but say? But it was my um. I like to call them my five keys of success. It's something that it, it just sticks with me, and you know, I always abide by which are hard work, mm-hmm. determination, right. dedication, motivation, and ambition. Oh. Uh. So you know, I like to spread those five keys and just spread them to different people, and at the same time, show them how I'm using them That's in right. my life and what I've accomplished by you know following these steps. That's right, and I, 
I, I, I salute you, commend you, and I respect you for that because every time I've seen you, you've always presented yourself uh, as a commendable, uh, respectable young man. And I'm not just saying that because you're in front of me, you know what I mean? Like, I run into little bad ass kids all the time, you know what I'm saying? And they might have a lot of talent and they might be very well dressed, but they just little bad ass kids, not because they have to be. But because they just haven't, ch they 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 haven't chose a, a a a different path for themselves yet. See, that's the thing about it. It's all about the environment. At the same time, you know, you you just got to take everything in a in effect sometimes. Yeah. And you know, that's why I like to motivate you. Show them where I came from. Right. You know, I came from somewhere. Uh, the things like what I'm doing right now, sitting at the table with the legend himself, Ti. Man, that that's not possible where I'm from. <laughs> so you know, I, I'm a I'm a living testimony, you could say. Yeah. You know, of hard work, yeah. ambition, following your dreams. You know, yeah. Yeah, don't just go to sleep dreaming and wake up dreaming. You know, you got to go to sleep dreaming. You wake up, your feet touch the ground, and your feet touch the concrete. You know, you got to go get it. That's right. You you got to work for whatever you want. It won't come knocking at your door. Ain't that the truth? That's something that my pops, you know, he instilled in me. You know, you want something, you got to work for it. Absolutely. Uh, and and so, uh, all right, so let's cut to on your journey. How'd you find my house, Corey? Well, you know, uh, four years, you know, it was four years, a whole lot of miscommunication, a whole lot of people, which, you know. What was the first stop you made? What was the first stop? Because you were at my grandmama's house, too. You went over to, you went over on Bankhead to that house, and I think you went to my mama's house, and then you made your way to my house. See, I went to a lot of, you know, a lot of your old stomping ground. Yeah. You know yeah. what I was doing with and the whole. And you took pictures with a sign. Yes, sir. Okay. But actually at your house, you know, I had to take it a little step farther. Okay. Now, let me tell you this story right here. <laughs> Look, I want to start this off by saying I went playing with your mailbox, right. but your mailbox was playing with me. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, as far as the picture that I took, uh, actually that was uh, somebody else's idea. I'm not sure who, but. Don't worry about it. Yeah. No, 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 no name, no problem. Most definitely. But uh, I was like, you know, I'm at T.I. House. You know, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I got to do something that I feel he going to remember me by. There's no guarantee that he going to see this picture. So what I did was uh, I grabbed a couple of the uh, posters that I had on me. Uh -huh. Actually, I got a couple of them right here to show you where my posters at. Okay, I remember the posters. They was on my mailbox. I remember. Oh, oh you I found remember. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I seen them. I seen yeah, them. Yeah, but like I, I said, I, I was them. putting them in the mailbox. <laughs> now here, now here, where I say that the mailbox was playing with me. So okay. the mailbox was perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. It was closed perfectly fine. I mm -hmm. opened it perfectly mm -hmm. fine. So I put the flies in, fold them up so they could fit. Mm -hmm. I closed the mailbox. Get what happened? What happened? Fell right back open. So, uh -huh. so I did it again. I kept closing, opening it. It kept on opening. Uh -huh. Every time I closed it. Uh -huh. So, look, I told the mailbox this right here. I said, mailbox, this is the last time I'm about to deal with you now. You about to work with me. I, I think you about to get me caught out here. So, look, you about to close or I'm gone. So, I closed the last time. Couple of se couple of seconds went by. It opened right back up. I said, nah, forget it. I <laughs> ran to the car. I'm running. Ah, go, 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 go. That's all I was screaming yeah. when I got the car. Go. So we pulled out later on. My pops ended up asking me, like, what, what, what happened? What they told you you had to go? And, he, and then I told him, nah, it was just a mailbox. It wasn't closed. He was like, oh. <laughs> I was watching y'all, you know. There's a spot in the house, you know what I mean, that I have when people are outside. And I go up and I just look at them. You know what I'm saying? They jump and wave and do all that kind of stuff. And I was just looking at them, and I watched you, and I didn't know who you were, what you were doing. Um, but I think you held up a sign or held up something. And I don't know why, but I thought, man, this is not the same kind of people that come around here. I didn't say anything to you, and I didn't invite you in for all of those who are wondering. It's not that happy of an ending. but Not quite. You did find your way in the presence of some of my partners, you know, who who actually took the liberty of calling me, FaceTiming me with you in front of them. Tell everybody who that was. Well, you know, like I said, it was four years of miscommunication. You know, a lot of people, they said they get me in the room right with you. Yeah. But, you know, it wound up happening because a beautiful soul that God sent down to me. You know, most people know him by Young Thug. But I just call him, <laughs> a, you know, a big bro or Jeffrey. But like yeah. I was saying, though, so I was out in L.A. I was doing a uh, video shoot with him. Uh -huh. So it was a video, Wycliffe Jean. Right. So uh, later on that night came, and he had asked me, so, Corey, you know, what you, what you got going on? What you doing? You know, and his voice. And then I was like, you know, I'm still working, uh, keeping on this uh, campaign, looking for tilt. 
So right. it's like, oh no, no, nah, we about to end that right now. I'm about, I'm about to call Tip right now. I'm, I'm about to end that myself. Yeah. So that's when he wound up FaceTiming you. I believe yeah. you was in New York in your hotel at the time. Yeah. And then uh, he told you he gonna pull up with me when you when, when you see us when you see him he gonna be with me. We gonna yeah. pull up on you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so after you had completed the mission, you met Ti. Did you ever think to yourself, okay, now what's next? Yes, sir. See, that's exactly how I was, you know. That's why it was a four-year journey, and I'm 13 now. So Ooh. I've been doing it for seven years. But, you know, at 10 years old is when I found you. But the thing about it is I'm the type of person, if I don't have no goal, I'm not doing nothing. Mm. So what I had to do, you know, I set myself a new goal. Okay, I have confirmed I, I confirmed the uh, first goal that I had. Okay, I know now that he knows of me. I mm -hmm. know that he knows for sure. Yeah. Out of my own mouth, I heard it from my own ears, that he knows about the movement. Right. Well, now it's the next step, actually meet him in person and making sure he feels what I'm saying. Right. And he and he sees it in person, you know. Now, I did meet you in person, you know what I'm saying, because of how articulate you are and because of how, you know, your, your, your intelligence, uh, it, 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 like, you can't ignore it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You are obviously gifted and talented in many different ways. The first thing I told you, do you remember? Oh, uh, you, you're talking about it at the uh, at the tour when I first met yeah, you, right? Yeah, what, what, what yeah. What was it that I said to you? You said you've been looking for me. That was the first thing. <laughs> I remember you said that. You said you've been looking for me. Yeah. So then we was walking in the hallway, and you was like, okay, you've been looking for me. So what's up? You you found me. <laughs> you, what you got to say? Right. Well, see, now, and beyond that, because you were talking to me about music, and you were telling me about, you know, you just signed the YSL. Well, actually, I haven't signed to nobody as of right now. I'm still independent, but why sell? That's family, you know. That, those are my brothers. Okay. Well, at the time, you were telling sisters. me you were exploring an opportunity. Yes, sir. With why sell? And I told you, man, I'm more concerned with what you were doing academically. Education. What, 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 what how you were continuing your education? Uh, and what did you tell me? Oh. Uh, what, what did I tell y'all? Uh, no, no. I, I remember. Well, let's, well, let's just talk about right now. Let's talk about your academics right now. Like, what are you doing, like, as far as school is concerned? Well, as far as right now, you know, I've been getting to my history because I want to know more about myself, mm -hmm. more about my ancestors. So I've been working on that mm -hmm. and also my English. But my favorite subject overall is uh, math. Mm, so, you know, I, I love math. That's, that, that's just my favorite Yeah, mine overall. Too. Yes, yeah. sir. Math was my favorite as well. Uh, but, you know, it's real easy, man, to get caught up in the, the glitz and the glamour of the industry. And this industry comes with a lot of distractions. How do you manage to avoid the distractions while having to be in this, in this environment? That goes right back to one of my keys. One of my keys was, you know, your motivation. That has to do with the team, the circle that you build. Mm. And me personally, I have my pops and my auntie. Mm -hmm. And those two, you know, they play major roles in my life. And they keep me out of trouble. Right. And they help me stay on the right path. And my pops, he already let me know that the game route, if I really want to do this, you know, I'm playing in the grown man's game. Yeah, that's real. So, so, so... <sighs> So you homeschool, right? Yes, sir. So you don't go to school like traditional school. So what's a typical day like for 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 Corey? Well, um, I wake up at seven o'clock. That's well, actually, I wake up at six, but seven o'clock is when I first get my schooling and everything in. Okay. So seven o'clock comes around. You know, I do private homeschooling, so I can do it in my my pace. You know, if I need to, I can slow it down, or I can do it at the same speed, or I can go faster if I so please. Mm. So that's how it goes, and I do um K twelve. Okay. So that's a normal day for me from 7 to 11. I'm at home doing my schooling. Or if I'm traveling, you know, I always have my laptop. Because for eighth graders, you know, you don't have any more, like, textbooks or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Everything's strictly online. What? All eighth graders? Yes, sir. Uh, I remember, like, third and fourth and fifth, you know, they'll still hand you stuff that, you know, you can textbook write. Right. But from now, you know, everything's just on the computer. So how 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 is the difference in homeschooling from traditional school? Well, and I how say, long have you been homeschooled? I've been doing homeschooling since maybe the third grade. 
Wow. At the third grade, I came out of um, so like North Jackson years. Elementary, yes, sir. Okay, so how, what's the difference, the main difference that you can notice? The main difference is, of course, you know, you have more attention because I have my tutor, so, you know, for people... You no know, telling, you know, your kid he might need, you know, or she might need some special attention. So that's one up on it. And also there's completely no distractions with homeschooling, you know. It's just you in the room. Mm. Now, what do you think about the social aspect of going to school, having friends and extracurricular activities, sports, um, art, and you know just other things that come with going to school that you might not get to participate in because you're being homeschooled what do you think about that well that just has to do with you know whatever you're doing if you want to be a basketball player then you know that depends on your route whatever you take but for me you know i'm recording artists i mm. wanted to be a motivational speaker which mm. that's something that you know no offense to any schooling but you know they don't teach you that in schooling so for me, it actually is best for me to do homeschooling because the type of career that I want to do, you know, I want to be a businessman. Mm -hmm. And they don't quite teach that, but I do plan on going to college to get my business degree. So okay. it just depends on what you're doing, you know, and how dedicated you are. Okay. Okay. I could dig that. Now, I mean, you you – you definitely present yourself like a man, like a young man with a plan. Thank you. You know, um, I just want to know how did you find yourself in the mall getting in trouble? Well, you know that particular day, like I said, uh, it was really a confusion with the mall and also all of the attendants in the store so mm -hmm. i'm okay with the store managers they let me come in you know they love when they see me mm -hmm. but at the same time you know the mall i'm not sure how they felt about it yeah and they didn't i guess they didn't contact the managers of certain stores that i was in right so that's really how it all happened and also of course it has to do with you know whatever call was made to the officer and yeah. how it was sounded so that's another thing once i heard that you'd gotten arrested or detained for, you know, I guess, trespassing in a mall or whatnot. <clears throat> I immediately came to your defense, but only because I knew you. You know what I mean? I knew you. I knew your character. I knew, I, I like, you know, I know how you present yourself and how you carry yourself. So I knew that it was out of character and abnormal for you to put yourself in a position that would cause for you to be, you know, arrested. Yes, sir. And actually speaking on that, you know, you were a huge help for me because, you know, when I was going through the situation, you know, like like you just said, you know, I'm a kid who I do positive things, you know. Right. I, don't, I don't look for danger and I don't expect for it to come to me. But for that to happen, you know, I was very lost. I was going back and forth with myself about what I'm doing. You know, mm. at that time, you know, I was just really putting a smile on my face so, you know, I could, you know, give the ones around me confidence. Mm -hmm. So when you came in, you know, you called me, you talked to me, you let me know that, you know, the universe, the people, they're on your side because of the type of kid that I am, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that's why different people came to my defense. That really helped me, and you know, understand the situation and get a better mindset about what was going on. Yeah, I know you now. You know you you you, you kind of like speak very cavalierly about the people that came to your defense. These are just just anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Ellen DeGeneres. Mm -hmm. How did you find yourself on the Ellen DeGeneres show? Well, actually, she had seen me from when I was on CNN, but before that, okay. it was years. Before that, though, it was positive. It was positive. Okay. It was positive. But before that, though, uh, actually, we was mailing her and everything, but you know she's a busy woman you know i'm pretty sure she has thousands of people emailing her so sure. it didn't get around her attention mm. but when i was on the cnn show you know uh they wanted to know how at that time i was uh like 11 maybe 10 mm -hmm. and at that point i had sold 250,000 of my cds Sheesh. independently so you, you know to the money uh corp <laughs> I'm, I'm just working hard and staying dedicated <laughs> <laughs> that's the best way i can put it <laughs> Working hard and staying dedicated, baby. You know, it pays right, off. Yeah. Pays off. That's hard right, work man. does pay off. 
So at that point, you know, they wanted to do an interview, and also because uh, they was at Patchwork, so I met the producer of that certain, uh, you know, that certain show or whatever time that they had with right. CNN, so they wanted me on there. And also because I was motivating the youth, they wanted to know, you know, how you doing this at only 11 or 12 years old, you know? Right. And, uh, and, and, Ellen, and Ellen invited you to the show. Yes, sir. And um, how did you find that experience? When I was first there, you know, I had to do a reality check. Okay. When I was first there, you know, I had to, hold on, this really the stage of Ellen that I'm standing on, you yeah. know, because. It's it, surreal. Oh, yes, sir. It was very surreal because, you know, you get to see, you know, your goals coming true. You know, you get to see what you've been working for mm. and, you, and you see it happening right before your eyes. So, right. so that was really, you know, that gave me even more motivation. You know, that just put some more fire behind me. Right. You know, that made me think. Okay, I didn't got on here. Now it's time for a second time. That's right. I, I got to give them something else that I'm doing. That's right. So it, it was a real eye opener, motivated me, and showed me that all of my hard work, you know, it pays off. That's real. Now, did did any of these experiences did they help you during your dark moments? Well, yes, sir. It most definitely did, cause you know. I realized that from what I've been doing over the years, you know, I went back because, like I said, I was going back and forth with myself, so I had to go back to what I was doing. Mm. I went back to different uh, clips, different videos to see what have I been doing, you know. How can I improve the situation? So that definitely helped along the way, you know, for me to grasp myself again, I can say. You know, mm -hmm. I had to find myself in, in that moment because it was very dark for me, you know. I had to find what I was doing. I had to find out myself. Why am I on this journey? Now, speaking of which, right, uh, you, 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 you did say, you said that, that it was dark for you, and I could understand as a young man who ain't used to getting in no trouble hardly, man, how, how that could be. But could you please explain to the listeners here, how, like, okay, so when you're at the mall and the cop approaches you, What's going through your head? Well, at that very moment in time, I was going through a um, course in my schooling about my amendments and my rights. Mm. So immediately when he had asked for my name, and usually that doesn't happen, mm -hmm. they talked to my auntie about, you know, what's his age, how old is he? So immediately um, I invoked my um, Fifth Amendment because that's <laughs> what I was saying, you know. I did have to speak. So like I said, I was really learning at that time. So immediately, you know, <laughs> I was just, um, Man. you could say I was trigger happy. You know, I was just ready to use it. So that's how it was Let's not use the word trigger me. happy. Let's just say you were eager to use, you know, you were eager to invoke your Fifth Amendment, right? Yes, sir. Um, So you ain't say nothing to the police? Well, actually, I told them my Fifth Amendment because, you know, I don't, don't want to be rude and just not say nothing at all. I mm -hmm. want them to know why I'm not speaking. Mm -hmm. So I told them that. But, of course, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure that did rub them the uh, wrong way because now I know, you know, you, you take that up in different places. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't go to the officer about it. So I'm pretty sure that rubbed them the wrong way. Mm. So after that, it escalated. Yes, sir. I saw the video as well. Um, so after it escalated, like, then he, like, grabbed you or something, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, he grabbed my arm and uh, he was twisting it real tight like at why? that moment. Like, what was, did he give a command? Actually, he, he, oh, yeah, I know what it was. So what had happened was there was somebody in the mall that was like, Court J, I'm going to holler at you. The people who I was talking to before the whole incident happened. So I was like, all Your right, fans. I turned around. Yes, sir. Okay. You know, some acquaintances, I'd say it like that. Right, okay. So I turned around and shake their hand, you know, tell them, all right, catch you later. But then at that moment, he took it as, uh, I was trying to flee the scene. That's what he said, you know. He was trying he took to flee as, the scene. Yeah, that, that's how, how, how he took he it. He said that? I was trying to flee when that happened. So at that moment, you know, he grabbed my arm. He said I was being detained. So. Uh. Okay. So at no time did he ever ask the manager of the store if you had permission to be there. No, sir. Mm. Like I said, I just believe that that happened to do with maybe the call that he got. So, you know, he probably felt that I was a delinquent child. Well, you know, you never e know. Even even in having a call made, like, I believe that this the officer's responsibility to get to the bottom of whatever's going on. Like, that's what you're called to the scene for. You're called to the scene. There's something going on. We don't know what. So the police are called to the scene to figure it out. You can't figure it out without asking 
questions to all of the people who could be involved and have answers. So you were the only person that he was speaking to. Well, first uh, he talked to my aunt, like her name. Then he went to me. Okay. And then from there it was all on me. But he never asked any of the other people around. Did you direct them to ask the, the managers? Well, no, sir, because I really just didn't know how to immediately, you know, take the situation and de-escalate it because, you know, this was my first time. Well, it wasn't my first time because I've had different run-ins with different police officers, but none was like this. Mm -hmm. So it was my first time, you know, in in this particular type of situation. Mm. And so finally, you ended up being charged. And what did they charge you with? Um... It was a felony, uh, I remember, uh, trespassing, Mm. a misdemeanor trespassing, too. And uh, they tried to say um, obstruction of an officer. Obstruction of an officer. I I can't remember my fourth charge, but I had four in total, three misdemeanors and one felony. Mm. And and so you wagged that. You ended up, you know, presenting your case and, and explaining to them that you did have a place being there in the mall and that you were not a delinquent. And and they basically, uh, they gave you something you can handle and said if you stayed out of trouble for a certain period of time that they wash it, right? Yes, sir, but uh, that, that's why I feel like it had to do with, you know, my personality and what type of examples I had been sitting. And uh, thank God, because I was blessed with a um, great supervisor, you know, my parole <laughs> officer. Her name was Miss Sharon, and she was a very this cool person. Was, first of all, it's not a parole officer. <laughs> okay, well, uh, my supervisor. Your pro, your, let's call, let's, let's say a probation officer. Okay. Because, see, a parole officer is when you was in jail, you was in prison, and then they let you out of prison early, and that's called parole. So when they let you out of prison early, they give you a parole officer. You didn't have a parole officer. You had, uh, I guess we can call it, you know, uh, for lack of better terms, a probation officer. So so you say she was very helpful in, in, in assisting you completing your 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 obligations successfully. Yes, sir. So what I had to do was uh, I had to stay out of trouble for um six months, which, which wasn't the problem. Oh no, sir, that was easy. Yeah. And also I um did a you know this had to do with my education. I was making all A's, so they wanted me to uh speak to different schools. Oh, you're a straight A student. Yes, sir. Okay. So they wanted me to speak to different schools, which I love doing anyway. So mm. once again, that's easy. I love that. So right. I, actually, I had did a um a 500 word essay on what I was going to speak about. Okay. Which me personally, I love to speak about things that um the school doesn't quite teach like um credit. You know, I call it credit education. It's something that I've learned, you know, you're going to need to know about when you turn 18. Financial literacy basically. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, after you completed that, did you ever get an apology from the officers? Did you ever get any kind of See, the crazy thing is, you know, I'm such a person, you know, I'm such a kind-hearted person at times, you know. I really just want to get, you know, how, how what was going through his mind. You know, I haven't got an apology from him. You know, we haven't talked since then. Yeah. But I do want to meet him one day and eventually get, you know, what was going on? What Was you having a yeah, bad day? Yeah, we need day? to get to the bottom of that. I want to figure out exactly what he felt like you was, like, such a threat. Like, why you were so harmful to him or the mall or to the store to where you felt like he had to take that kind of, force or, or immediate action um so but the good news is we 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 rectified all that got all that behind you yes sir and now you're back focused on your journey yes sir i'm going full force yeah you know? so what's so what's next well, what's next for me is actually I have my EP that I'm promoting as of right now. It's Big Old Business. Big Old Business. Yes, sir. Not no little bitty business. Oh, let's see. The thing was when I turned 13 years old, you know, it was a new chapter in my life. So uh-huh. I'm like, you know, everything's big now. It's That's no right. longer 11, 12 years old. You know, uh-huh. I'm in the teens. It's Big Old Business Big now. Old Business now. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, I got it right here. It's okay, let's see business. it, man. Big Old Business. Yeah. Yes, you, got your little, you got your briefcase? Yes, sir. Another you know, mink actually, coat. That's this ain't the, the same mink coat. This is different. Uh, I like to call that my uh, my fox fur. You that's know. your fox fur. Okay, yes, sir. Cool, man. You, yeah, man. It'll be a, I can dig it. And it has 11 songs on it. Got action. 11 songs on it. Yes, sir. So what's next is uh, I'm going to be shooting a couple videos from okay. the songs, uh, the uh, singles on there. How many which, of these you done sold? You done sold a half a million of these yet? <laughs> well, actually... <laughs> Now at 13 years old, I sold 350,000. You sold 350,000 of di- the entire discography that you've put out. Yes, from sir. Different so CDs. Far. Yes, sir. That's my that's my um seventh 
And this is I seven. sell it for ten dollars now. Ten dollars now. Yes, sir. You stepping on up there, man. Yeah, that's so. Wait a let me see. I'm gonna go and buy one from you. Let's uh, you wanna know the funny thing about that, Mr. Tilt? What that? I just thought about it. Well, you said that you know, uh, when I first, the very first time we ever met each other, it was at Callaway High School. Okay. You was coming to receive the key to my city, Jackson, Mississippi. I remember that. And you was doing a um, motivational speaking run. So, like I said, you came to Jack, you came to uh, Callaway High School, which is a high school that uh, my auntie and my grandma worked at at the time. Okay. So, you know, I was able to get right on stage, which, you know, I was to the side, though. I was on the right-hand side. You was in the middle giving your speech. Okay. So, right before you got done, you didn't walk off stage just yet. Mm -hmm. But at that time, you know, you, it looked like you had the whole shelf department with you. <laughs> Maybe I might just be over-exaggerating. Maybe one or two weren't there. Amen. But you was well protected. Whatever the, well, actually, they were there for y'all. Oh, they were? Yeah, man. Oh, okay. that, that, like the school, for some reason, they think that I, I'm going to come to speak at a school and like I'm, you know, something dangerous could happen. So they you like to protect the students by having okay. all of these officers around, which the students are no danger to me and I'm no danger to them, but. I don't know, man. But anyway, no, so I understand what you're talking but, about because that is something that they did often. Yes, sir. So like I was saying, at that time, you know, I'm not knowing. I'm a small six-year-old. This was I was six when I first started that the whole— That was a little old business. Yes, sir. I was a small, I was a small uh, six-year-old. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, how am I about to do this? You know, so ended up, before you walked off stage, I closed my eyes, and I took a shot in the dark. So I spent the round with my eyes closed. I said, excuse me. So I opened my eyes, looked up, it was you. It, it was <laughs> Tilt, T.I. Harris, it was him. It was Mr. Tilt. So I got done with my presentation. I told you, and it's five dollars of you like to purchase it. And you hit me with the million dollar smile. And you told me, uh, I don't got no cash on me. So I tried to tell you, you no, know, I accept credit and debit, but everything, you know, for that split moment that I told you the presentation, it was like everything yeah. just slowed down. Yeah. But then every as soon as you said that, everything got to moving, you know. <laughs> everything went full fledged. So I'm just like, uh, alone now. That's five dollars because you get walking. Because I ain't get to oh, tell you. Oh, I owe you, you five. Oh, they, they, you know, we going to put that behind us. We're going to put that behind us. I don't want to owe you no money. <laughs> you know, we going to put that behind us, though. You know what I'm saying? Here, here you go. Here, okay, here. I got you some change. I'm going to give yeah, you give change. Me the change right? back I got you. Sure. I'm going to put yeah, it right yeah, here so yeah. you know, I ain't. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. But Matter like, fact, I was, you can give me my 10. If you just give me my 10 back okay. that I gave you. Well, then technically, I would only be getting $10 then. No, see, because you got a 20 over there. So you give me my 10 back, then you only owe me five. You know, since so you okay, say math, we'll your favorite like subject. That. You we'll say math, your favorite we'll, we'll subject. We'll do it like oh, that. Now, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm pretty slick too. Hmm, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we gonna know. do it like I ain't that. that I ain't. I ain't the dullest knife in the draw now. You dig <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me ask you this: Who's your greatest influence? Um, you know, no hesitation. Most definitely, my pops. That's dope. That's dope. What is the most valuable piece of information that you think you've received from him? I have, I, I think it has to do with, you know, really, you know, along this way he's taught me, you know, you you have to understand that whenever you're doing something outside of the box, not everybody is going to understand. Right. Because, you know, this world is really designed for, you know, you to stay in the line. That's so right. whenever you're stepping out, you know, something's going to happen, you know, because mm. not everybody's used to that. So he let me know, you know, not everybody is going to understand your vision and take it, you know, they're not going to take care care of it just as you are. So, you know, you got to watch your team, the people who you surround yourself with. Mm. So that's the biggest advice I would say he's gave me. You know, that can go to a lot of different people. That's what I mean by, you know, improving lives. Right. You know, right. that's a piece of advice somebody else probably might need. Man, I mean, I think that's dope. That's dope. Now, let me ask you this. I, I, another thing I've always encouraged you uh, uh, to do and, and I've always asked you about is what, what, what do you read? Well, um, what kind of books do you read? What interests you? I have a well. I, my personal uh, favorite is on uh, the genre of business because mm. you know that's stuff that I like to learn. So, um, like what? Like what's your favorite book in business? My favorite book is um the one he's on Shark Tank. Uh, his name is Damon John. I yeah, believe. yeah. And uh, he has a book. Which one is it? Rise and Grind. Got you. I love that book. You know, okay. that's my favorite. I'm still reading it as of right now. Okay. But I like what it has taught me so far, you know. Like it's what? Telling, Tell me what you learned from that. What I love is how it's telling his story and at the same time different people's story of how they made it, you know, the dedication that they 
they've put into their craft. So what I learned from it is, you know, these people, you know, they put so much work and, and determination into what they're doing. You know, That's I got to right. step up my game. I mean, man, I think that, you know, as you recognize the need to step up your game, I think that you also inspire and motivate others, uh, young and adult, to step yes, their sir. game up as well. Um, you also... You also took, you know, t- you took advantage of the opportunity to raise some money. Yes, sir. It was for actually that's another reason why I was on the um, Ellen Show. Okay. Because it was my 10K giveaway, and it was um, a nonprofit organization. It's called If I Can Do It, You Can Do It Too. Is my own organization that I have, and at that time it was maybe around November, December. Mm. So I was helping, you know, the less fortunate children, uh, homeless families, you know, for Thanksgiving and Christmas, giving them free toys, gifts, you know clothes so it's ten thousand dollars worth of you know just helping the community and improving different people lives however i can we fed a couple of families for thanksgiving that's dope well how that like so how's it how's it progressed how's that 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 that, that campaign progressed Oh, it's progressed a lot, and you know, I still, I'm still doing it. And as of right now, you know, I have my intentions set on what I want to do now. Mm. I did a 10k giveaway then. I okay. want to do a 20k giveaway now. Okay. So yeah. I'm working on that. I always want to step up my game every time. I'm bringing something new to the table. So that's what I'm working on as of right now with my foundation. Man, that's fair. Uh, I think that I think that you're an ex- you're an excellent example for the next generation. As to how you can follow your dreams, but not have to like try to conform into whatever is society standard. You know what I mean? Uh, you 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 you're still very well behaved, very well mannered, very articulate. Uh, you still care about your education. You still dedicate yourself to your grind, um, whether that's schoolwork or, or or your entertainment. Um, and I really just want to tell you to keep up the great work. I'm extremely proud of you, man. Thank I think you. you came a long way. I appreciate it, but I I got much more planned that I want to do. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know what I'm saying? When you get there, man, I'll be keeping the champagne cold for you. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> um, now, and another thing that I really, really love, man, uh, you and me and your pops, we speak. We speak often. Um, and I really love the bond that you guys have. Tell me what do you think is so special about that bond between you and your pops? I have to say it's because, you know, a lot of, it's like, you know, we go hand to hand, you know, at the same time I'm learning something new, Mm. he's learning something new at the same time, but he's teaching me and he's giving me all of his knowledge. So at the same time, you know, I can be the best me. And eventually, you know, one day I want to surpass my pops. So I think that's what it is, you know, he's learning every day and he's passing it on to me and I'm learning at the same time. So, you know, I I love my pops and I love learning from him, but at the same time, I'm just so ambitious about one day being better than him because he's a mastermind. You seem like you're ready to teach. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still in my learning courses, but with the whole I'm looking for T.I. campaign, you know, yeah. I had a marketing plan behind it, and actually I have uh, okay. right here. Let me see this. So, yeah, my, see? I'm looking for T.I. That's yeah. an old one I had. You can tell yeah, that's from years ago. This is a collector's ago. item. <laughs> but then, you know, I have bigger ones, you know, for you adults. So, you got bigger um, ones. Who is this, who are this oh, one? Oh, that was me. That was a long that's time ago. Okay, that was a long time ago. Okay, got you, got and you. And then uh, this was my pops, you know, a while ago, but it was for adults and kids but he was the one you know i came I, to how him. much of these how many of these did you say well actually as far as that you know we we didn't get right on that because i wanted to meet you first okay and i wanted to show the world then we was gonna get on it. okay gotcha. yes sir what? so from that you know i came to him about you know i want to meet ti he's the hustle man i'm the hustle kid it only makes sense <laughs> but like i said he's such a mastermind about it and he always reminds me grown man gang you know so he was the one who's like okay well if you want to do this i'm behind you he was he behind whatever i'm doing but right. you know we gonna come up with a marketing plan behind it you know, you because whenever you're looking for somebody, you know, you got to you gotta have your foundation. Yeah. You know, what you're standing on. So uh, we came up with the I'm looking for T.I. shirts. And that's just why I say one day I want to be better than him. One day I want to think ahead of the game just like him. Right. That's dope. That's dope. And you got your pops here. Hey, pops, come on. Come, 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 come. Let me ask you a question, man. I just want to. Yes, sir. If, if, what's up, bro? What's up? What's up? Love. Now, listen, man. 
did you teach him this shit, man? Like, for <laughs> real? I just want to know, like, dead ass here. Is this something that kind of like you, like, how, how did this take place? in such grand fashion, the way it's presented. Like how, you know, how did we get here? Like, you know what I'm saying? When did you recognize something special? Well, I, I recognized something special at four years old. Mm. You know, when he was he was break dancing and, and, you know, on the beat and listening, always bobbing his head to the music. Um, but one of my main things that I want to touch on is the looking for T.I. Because when he came to me and said that's what he wanted to do, like he said, I reiterate, I let him know, well, look, this the king. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is my generation. You know what I'm saying? I grew up on T.I. You see what I'm saying? Right. And I know when you come in at a, at a, at a man of that standard, you know, it's, you, you, you got to, who are you? Right. You see what I'm saying? And so it's like, you got to be a yo. Like when you come at him, you know what I'm saying? Then he need to respect you for something he need to know. So you don't just need to go saying, hey, you know, I'm Corey J, work. Like, we gonna come up with a plan to work. Yeah. Like, the looking for T.I., it wasn't like we wanted to directly come at you. No, it was, we wanted, I wanted him to work. Right. Work his way to get your attention. Right. That's what you do, and that's what, that's what was so important to me. That's what I instilled in him. You know what I'm saying? Work. Right. Hard work, dedication. Mode. You say you want to meet T.I.? Yeah. Work. Right. Dedicate yourself. Master the craft. Don't just, I want to meet T.I. and think, well, I'm finna go meet T.I. But well, what if you see him tomorrow and you take a picture with him? Okay, so what? Mm. What's what's after that? Right. You took a picture with him, and You know, you know, so that's, and that's just what I want. I always wanted to instill him, teach. I'm proud that we're here today. Right. Because even... I did music when I was younger. Right. You know, I never got a chance to sit at this table. Right. So what he's doing, he already, like he said, he already surpassing me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, I'm very proud, and 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 I'm just proud that he actually, you know, he started this at six. He 13 now. He met you when you was 10. Yeah. And it still show it don't happen overnight right. because he 13 now. Right. So he met you at 10. And it still take three more years. Yeah. Before this still happen. And I just hope every youth, every no matter what age, that you can look at what he did, what he accomplished from from six to now, mm -hmm. and 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 everybody can take something from that and say, hey, you know what I'm saying? I got a dream. I'm gonna go forward. I think you did a, a jam up, a, just a splendid job with with instilling like just some moral standards and respect. Uh, and I mean, you know, you could just tell that he's a well-raised young man. You dig what I'm saying? Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, but what happens when, like, Corey get in trouble? Like, when is Corey, like, what kind of trouble does Corey, cause it got to be every kid, ain't no kid perfect. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I got seven of them, every yeah. last one of them, even, even major. You know what I'm saying? All of them find ways to get in trouble because kids are curious. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're discovering the world, a lot of things for the first time. So. What happens, like, what times has Corey got in trouble that you can remember? Oh, uh, man, Corey really don't get in trouble. Mm hmm Um, I, I don't, he got a, he got a problem sometimes not, not, not listening. Okay. So, yeah. you know, you know, that, that causes sometimes, you know, you gotta, you gotta do something like take their phone. Yeah. Because he's too into the game. That's right. That's he's right. too into, yeah, so, you know, sometimes he'll lose focus. Yeah. You know, won't be on his schooling like he supposed to be, or won't be on his books like, you know, I gotta, so he don't really get in trouble like he goes out and start anything, but yeah, yeah, it's nah, just things, nah, nah, but nah, it's not just, imagining just, that. I'm talking yeah, like around the house. Yeah, it's just the structure that I gotta keep on him and, right. and, and, you know, I do that by like I said, taking that phone. Mm. That it ain't much you gotta do. That the main that the main distraction. Yeah, you take the that phone. Phone is the main distraction. Mm, yes, sir. Yeah, and you have you got brothers and sisters. Uh, I have one younger sister. Her okay. name is Layla, and she's uh six years old. Okay, dope, dope, dope. Is she following in in Big Brother's footsteps? Funniest thing is, she want to be just like me. Let me tell you this story. So one day, <laughs> so she told me she want to be a rapper too. Okay. Uh, right now she doing cheerleader, but one day she told me I want to be a rapper just like you, bro, bro. Okay. So I told her, well, actually, my pops asked, "When you gonna start, bud?" And then she was just like, "Oh, I'm gonna start at six, just like my bro, bro." <laughs> <laughs> How old is she now? She's six right now. She she been freestyling the beats, you know. Okay. She made it come true. I'm I'm just watching it. That's what's up, man. Well, I, I hey, listen. I thank you guys for coming. Again, I can't you know I can't express enough how proud I am to see you guys come from outside of my house. 
you know, all the way, you know what I'm saying, touring with Young Thug on CNN, on the Ellen DeGeneres show, and consistently building a, a platform for yourself. Uh, that's commendable and respectable. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Now, what you may appreciate here, at Expeditiously, we have a tradition. The tradition is that we do a word of the week. Okay. Yeah. Now, the word of the week is usually indicative of the discussion or the guest that we had. Now, the word that I chose today, because you were the guest. This is a word that I chose just for you to suit your particular position in this industry and who I believe you to be. That word is anomaly. Anomaly. You ever heard that word before? I'm going to have to look it up. No, I'm going to tell you what the definition is right now. Okay. Anomaly. Something that deviates from what is standard, normal, or expected. A person who is unusual. So I use it in a sentence <clears throat> simply because I know people who listen right now, they're going to want to go to work, go to school, and stand around the water count, the water cooler uh, at the lunch table. They're going to want to use this word like they knew it their whole life. And we're going to let them do that, Corbin, because yes, that's how nice and that's how cool we are. You know what I'm saying? You no, know, it's all about taking something from the next person. You understand? We're going to fill up their cup right now. Let's do right. it. So we're going to use it in a sentence. Corey, also known as Lil C-Note, is not your ordinary young man. He's done more than some people twice his age, and he is nothing short of an anomaly. Oh, yeah, I love that sense. I'm be using that <laughs> all the time. <laughs> well, listen, Corey, man, thank you. But look, though, Mr. Tip, you know, before I get out of here, okay. I want to share this story with the people. Oh, come on, let's hear it. You know, this will be my first time ever telling this story, and it's something that I'm very, very passionate about. I've never told it to nobody. Let's so hear I it. wanted to say it right here today. This is the story between me and Birdman. Okay. And, you know, it's all about taking big risks. You know, once again, it falls under the five keys. Mm. Hard work, determination, dedication, motivation, and ambition. Mm -hmm. And always take big risks so you get the big reward at the end of the day. That's right. So what happened was, it was me, my auntie, and my pops. Mm -hmm. So uh, we was in Atlanta this day. It was a couple years ago. Right. But uh, so Birdman text, I just call him Big Aunt. Because, mm -hmm. you know, he always spend knowledge. Mm. So um, he texts, come see me. So uh, it, it was some real decision making that went into if we gonna go out there or not. Mm. Because you know, we didn't have the money to just be going to Miami, right. to be flying. We already knew if we was gonna go, we was gonna have to drive. Mm. And I wanna mind you this, mm -hmm. this was the day before New Year's Eve. Damn. So what room do you know that's gonna be open in Miami if not you didn't many. already book it? Not many. Unless you're going to the overly expensive. Right. And once again, we didn't have the money like that. Right. So, um, of course, we some risk takers, so we go. We lace our shoes up. We ready to do it. We get down muddy if we have to. That's right. So we go to Miami. We arrive on uh, New Year's Eve. Okay. So uh, I text him. I'm like, we out here, huh? He takes back bet. So uh, later on that night, we found out that he had an event mm. on Ocean Drive. So uh, my pops, he went out and he chopped it up with him. Mm -hmm. They, they uh, talked to each other. So uh, he wound up saying, come see me. Come, come to the house tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, at New 3 Year's or 4. Day. Yes, sir. Tomorrow is going to be New Year's Day. Okay, so he basically, so basically said, holler at me next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically what he said. <laughs> right on. So, um, yeah, so, of course, you know us, we like, okay, let, let's do a bit. We stay out here New Year's. Mm -hmm. It's all good. It's going to add up at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So uh, New Year's come around. And at this time, actually, like I said, once again, our rooms was booked. Mm. So for New Year's Eve, we actually had to sleep in the car, and then we freshened up that morning at a um, truck stop. Mm -hmm. So this is what I mean by nothing just happens because, you know, he said, bet, you know, you're just going out there. Right. But, you know, you got to take risks, and this you got to be willing to sacrifice at the same time. Right. And this is why I want to make sure the youth hears this mm. so, so they know the struggle in between. And you know that they don't just think that it's just an overnight process. So they see that the fur and the change don't just come overnight from that. This from came from, from hard that. work. You dig what I'm saying? This came from pure hard work. Okay. So uh, continuing the story, though. Mm -hmm. So it's New Year's. Okay, we wake up that morning from the fresh up truck stop. So we get out. Uh, I text them. This round, nah, nah, actually, I text them around three or four. So I text them, texting Birdman, no Birdman. He probably ain't up yet. 
Oh, he, he probably is no teller. Yeah. But like I said, he's a real it's busy New man. New Year's Eve, man. Yes, sir. It was oh, no, day. this was New Year's this day. No, no, but, 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 but this is New Year's Day, but following New Year's Eve. It yes, was sir. a lot of, I'm going to give you another word, debauchery that was probably taking place. And it was late nights, it led in the early mornings. So, but I understand. I can I can dig it. So let's, let's continue. So, you know, he's a real busy man. So, mm -hmm, you know, I mm -hmm. just discard it. I say, well, you know, I'm going to have to put my full foot forward. You know, and that's why I came out here. I'm not just gonna come out here. So five, six, come around, still no bird man. Eight, nine, no bird man. Eleven, twelve, still. Guess what? Midnight. No bird man. What? So, uh, like I said, at this point, me and my auntie and my pops, we like, uh, okay, he a busy man. That's cool. But at this point, we gotta take matters in our own hands. Yeah. You know, we came out here. We not just gonna come out here and get nothing accomplished. Okay. You know, that's not the mission. Right. So that night, uh, midnight now, we just keep doing our research. Me, my auntie, and my pops, we looking up where Birdman House said, you know, we on Google. And we on <laughs> we on YouTube. Man, y'all need to open up a private eye firm if this don't go well. I'm uh, talking so, about And, and as always, you know, I always find my man. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, I always find my man. So we kept on doing the research, and we found out the area. Man, I that need to owe you some in. money, Corey. I'm <laughs> telling you. So um, we wound up. We never got the direct like uh, address of where his house was, of course, because you know security, you know, security reasons. You know, so we never got security. the direct address, but we knew about the area because we were seeing the videos. We like. It's the area is seeing. We didn't cross this bridge tons of times. Mm. So his house really is like an island, just like you say, Stun Island. That's how it is. It's right, it's, it's like a bridge. I don't want to give too much information. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a bridge. So it's we rolling morning. down the bridge and uh, we look to the right. Mm. So from the videos that we seen, we already knew kind of what the back of the house looked like. But okay. what put the cherry on top is that we seen the red lights. Oh. So he had red lights at the back of his house. Okay. And we seen it from the videos that there's red lights in the back. So everybody like, that's it. Gotcha. That's the house. That's that's it right there. So oh, we uh in, in the spirit of the story, let's just change that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, pull up the red lights. Okay, go ahead. But so uh we go back around the bridge, but this time we go on his side where the house is for right. when we want to turn in. But let me tell you this right here. Like mm. once again, and I just wanna say before I even get to this, you know, this section of the story, you know, mm -hmm. this part, you know. God was with us, you know, God was in the car. <laughs> God was taking the wheel the whole time. So we stopped, we parked up because we seen the security gate, but it wasn't no security, I could tell you that much. Mm. Uh, it was some police officers, real, real deal. Yeah. Miami police force, you know, they was in their police cars. Nobody was at the um at the booth at the moment. Mm. But, you know, we couldn't just go through there. You know, it's a gate. We can't just come through police officers. Right. So we park up. Eventually, you know, once again, God. A car come around, you know, they come around us and they turn in. So we like, oh, they just turned in. Let's follow them. Let's go behind them. So we get directly behind them. And then they put the code in or whatever to get into their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So they go in, gates go up. So we just like, in that split moment, we like, push the gas. We got to go, 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 go once again. Mm -hmm. Just go through the gates. So uh, my pops, he pushed the gas. He going through the gate. I almost just went down on the car. Mm. It actually touched the car at one point. Mm. But then uh, it eventually lifted back up. So okay. we sped through. We made the right. And get what? what my happened? pops couldn't even focus on driving. Everybody looking back. We up. Everybody looking back because we just already know them. They about to put up. They about to put their lights on. Uh -huh. I, I know I ain't just putting no cold in that uh, gate. And they know we didn't neither. So, so what happened? Everybody looking back. And what we did was we knew the uh, side that his house was on. Mm. So we hit a U-turn, winded up the guards, nobody. I guess they didn't see us, so they was in their phones or something. Mm. Nobody came. So once again, just guy, he showed up and he showed out, baby. Mm. So what we did was we knew the street. We knew what a house was. So mm -hmm. we stopped for a little second. It's somebody dragging. Uh, uh, it's a gate. First off, it's a gate at the house, okay. you know, for his house. So uh, somebody bagging out of the driveway. All right. Somebody bagging out. The gate's open. So we like, the gate's open. Go. So me and my auntie, we hop out, and we go into the gates. You know, the, uh, the gates are closing right behind us. All right. This is like a movie scene. Okay. So uh, we walk up. Eventually, uh, rest in peace to um, CeeLo. You know, he was a good friend. You know, Damn. whenever we would come around, you know, he treated us like family. So right rest on. in peace to him. Right but uh, he was at the door, and he was like, hey, he, he must have thought that we was just some kids lost in the neighborhood. So mm -hmm. he was like, hey, y'all got to go. Y'all, y'all can't be in this yard. Y'all in the wrong yard. Y'all gotta go, in, in a real stone uh, tone. So mm -hmm. you know, uh, stern tone. 
Mm. There you go. That's what mm-hmm. I was looking for. So uh, he like, we got to we gotta go. So we like, you know, this Corey J. Hey, CeeLo, I'm Corey J. He like, nah, y'all got to go. Nah, it's me, Corey J. And uh, eventually he like, oh, who you say? You said Corey J. We like, yeah, it's me. It's the face. It's so, the it's face. It's the face. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, he like, oh, okay, it's y'all. Never mind. I right, hold on. Y'all wait right here. Let me go in the house. Mm. So he check. He wind up checking with Unc. You know, he check with Bird. Uh, he go in. Eventually he come back out probably like five minutes later. He come back and he like, you know, he sleep. But he said, uh, meet him at the studio, you know. Meet him at the studio uh, probably like one or two. We asked him what time he like one or two. Mm-hmm. So we like, okay, at that point, there's nothing we can do if you sleep. Mm-hmm. So uh, we walk out the gates, the gates opening up, you know, this time us coming out. Right. So uh, <laughs> we go back to the car. When I say, I probably just touch the door handle. I ain't yeah. even get to get in. Bing, 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 bing. My phone blowing up. Somebody texting me. Mm. It burned, man. Oh. And, and uh, let's just say it wasn't the most uh, pleasant message that I have received. What did he say? But, uh, uh, so uh, basically, he, he takes he, me. He, he, he let you know how displeased he was by you hunting him down. Yes, yeah, sir. And you know, I have to respect him because you know this is how this we lay his head. In, you Absolutely. Know? So you I have think? to respect what he was texting back. So uh, I look, I look at my phone. It's like two, three paragraphs. I'm like, dang, I ain't know you text this fast. So I'm just reading them. And you know, usually he called me nephew, but it wasn't no nephew to nah, be found. You put yourself in grown yeah. man business. Oh yeah, it wasn't no nephew to you be found. You that little nigga breaking in my house now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, he texts me, he like, it don't work like that. That's right. It don't work like that. You know, this is why I lay my head at y'all can't just be coming to a grown man house. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He told you right. Life don't work like that. He told you right. So I had to respect that. I'm yeah. like, okay, yeah. I understand. Now know that now you're thirteen, now that ain't gonna slide no more. I doubt that. But uh <laughs> hopefully those days <laughs> over. But uh like I was saying, so I, you, you right, know, God he gave me a piece of his, oh, he most definitely was. Yeah. So he gave me a piece of his mind, and, you know, I responded back. I understood his message, and I gave him a piece of mine, you know. But in a very <laughs> in a very respectful way, it was very respectful. So, yeah. you know, I'm like, okay, Big Long, I understand what you're saying, but, you know, you got to do stuff you ain't never done to get, you know, you got to do stuff you ain't never done to get things you ain't never had. Yeah. So I text him that. And, you know, Bird, he understood where I was coming from. He respected it. Mm-hmm. So he takes back. He like me to say the studio. Same thing CeeLo said, one or two. So uh, I think his time is uh, is great, but horrible at the same time. Terrible. Okay. Uh, <laughs> in a very nice way. So 3.45 come. It's 3.45 a.m. <laughs> 3.45 in the morning. Years old. I was uh, but it was New Year's, so I was good on schooling at that yeah, but time. Yeah, but, but, but ten I was years like, old, you uh, up three, four in the morning at the I studio. I was like ten or eleven. Ten years old, you waiting no bird man at three and four in the morning. Yes, sir. So three forty-five come around. He finally takes. Um, and this is the thing. Like I said, I'm like a bounty hunter. I always find out what my man is. <laughs> so uh, he takes the studio, like the address. But guess what? We right around the corner. We already know the studio. Yeah. So uh, we come in. We right at the gates. It looked like nobody was there because how secure it was. But the gates opened up. We told him we was with Birdman. So eventually, I get in. I meet up with him. You know, shake hands. But he had to go into the studio because he had his artist. So you know, he was mm-hmm. working with his artist. Six in the morning. Six in the morning, come around. It's six o'clock in the morning. He finally come out the studio, and then, uh, you know, I understand. He like, you know, I'm real sleepy right now. You know, I stayed up late. You know, I had a lot of stuff going on. I'm sleepy. Mm. Let's meet up tomorrow. So at that point, you know, going through my mind, I'm like, okay, tomorrow, but hold on. What mo- where tomorrow at? Mm. Tomorrow ain't guaranteed. I ain't got tomorrow. So I stand up, and I look him in the eye. Mm. I let him know, big on. I got to talk to you right now, bird. Did you stand up on something to look at me? <laughs> No, sir. I was just, I was just. Okay, you uh, looked up. Bird man. You looked uh, up. Look, bird. Your neck muscles. You, yes, you, sir. You use your neck. You muscles. know, I was flexing them real. Gotcha. Quick. Uh, All right, cool. Uh, but I was just like, uh, yeah. I, I looked him in the eye. I'm like, no, we got, we got to talk right now. I need to talk with you real quick. So you know, he looked me in the eye, and he like, shoot, let's do it. So uh, we go into the hallway of the studio, and you know, I really broke it down to him. I, I let him know what was going on. I told him to struggle. I told him, you know, I understand. I I love to come back tomorrow, but I ain't got tomorrow. We been sleeping in the car. You know, we washing up at the truck stop. Ain't no hotel. We ain't got no hotel. Nothing. We just sleeping in the car. You know, we running low on money. We might just run out of gas. Yeah. We ain't got tomorrow. Tomorrow ain't promised for us. Yeah. We might just get stuck out here at the truck stop. And then what happened? So uh, we go back. It was only like a 30 second to a minute conversation real quick. Mm-hmm. So uh, we go back into the room. He go immediately to my pops. He mm-hmm. like, what y'all scrape? Y'all got a car? What y'all need? So I'm like, oh, okay. He like, what you need? So this same house that, you know, he just texts us about. Yeah. Uh, he like, follow me to the house. So this time. 
Once again, God showed up and showed out this time. We right behind him, but it's a police officer at the gate this time. Mm. So the police officer stopped us. The um the gate immediately comes down. So he stops us. He he like, uh, hold on, y'all can't go through. We like, we with them. But he like, y'all understand that, but I need y'all identification. You know, I need the idea of the driver, take a picture of the driver, you know, get yes. who in the car. So uh, eventually we go around, we go in the gates. You know, this time, you know, uh, invited. Mm. Uh, probably invited this time so we go in he tell uh we call him og mm-hmm. you know he the oldest of the group so oh he tell og go in the house get the bag so og come back out like maybe five minutes after he come back out he hand me a, a large amount of money you know i don't want to disclose that information but yeah he gave me a large amount of money and then uh bird he came back around and he like uh you straight you you good nephew that uh, that handle it? You good? And I'm like, yeah. You must not know how much money OG just gave me. I'm straight. <laughs> I'm I'm good for now. So uh, he like, all right. Well, if you good, then uh, get the hell like out I my said, goddamn yard, and I see you tomorrow. <laughs> well, uh, he ain't said exactly like that. <laughs> but um, so uh, he was like, all right, see you tomorrow. So we walk out, you know. And at this point, you know, we was living life. You know, we was at a uh, he told he told us to uh, stay in the avatar. But we was just staying in the penthouse suite 500 a night. Mm. So, like I said, that's just a story. You know, if we didn't take the risk, you know, that we would be leaving with no money, less money than what we came with. That's right. So, that's just what I mean by, you know, whatever you're doing, take big risks. You earn the big reward at the end of the day. As long as you're prepared to take the consequences sometimes, yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. comes with it. It's but important uh, It's important to add that because the big risks don't always come with the reward. Sometimes yes, the sir. big risks come with the big consequence. I wouldn't advise nobody to do it. Uh, you know, you, but you know what? The best thing in the world is knowing what you can handle. Yes, sir. That's you very to important. Know what you can handle. But I just knew what my mission was. That's you know? real. I I knew what my mission was. As long I knew as what I decision, came down. As long as that's a decision that you made for yourself, and not one that somebody forced you in. You Most know what I'm saying? So I knew what I came down for, and you know and you I'm gonna complete man. my mission. You got your man. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know I mean. So uh, end of the day, my message to the youth is, you know, whatever you're doing, go out there. Yeah. And you know that's why I got into music because I wanted to inspire the youth. Like I said, I go in, I make hits. Whatever I do, I want to be the best at it. And at the same time, I'm going to motivate the youth at how I'm doing it. Right. Show them how to do it. So, once again, just follow the five keys. Hard work, determination, dedication, motivation, and ambition. Man, I appreciate you for putting everybody up on game, young boy. No Corey. problem. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, you've been nothing but uh, an example of, of, of respect and, and, and intelligence and talent yes, and sir. dedication since I met you. Uh, and um, I think the generation is lucky to have you, bro. Uh, and I, I, I appreciate you for no longer camping out in my front yard. <laughs> and now that you have, you know what I'm saying, have graduated from, you know, uh, breaking into uh, private gated communities without invitation, now you go, you have your own gated community and you can stand behind the gate and maybe you'll put a little, little, little motherfucker out of your yard. <laughs> you know, I'm just working on it. You know, right now the next step is um being invited, you know, properly announced. <laughs> you know, I'm making acquaintances and, the, yeah. and, you know, I'm working on that step at this point in my life. Well, I tell you what, brother, you have an open invitation here expeditiously, man. Thank you, man. All right? Yes, Love sir. Thank you respect. for having me. You know. Love and respect. You know, oh yeah, Mr. Till, one more thing I wanna tell you is Let's you know how it. y'all always, you know, I'm always talking about the table. You know, you always ask me, one day you ask me, So what's this table y'all always talking about? Is it glass? Is it round? Is it square? Well, I'd like to tell you that um this is the table right here I've this been talking table. about. You know, I'm proud to announce it right here, baby. This, this is the, the table. table. Yes, right. sir. Well you made it, brother. And I appreciate you, man, for, for more than anything, I appreciate you for being daring and brave enough to be you and not trying to be what nobody else wants you to be just continue to be you continue to follow your path continue to follow your dreams your passion listen to your pops trust your heart and the rest to fall in place all right Yes, sir. And I catch you, man, when you're 3.5 million. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget yes, about me now, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. You know, you was, along, you was all the way along the way. Man, man. Yes, well, sir. I, hey, man, I've, been, I've thoroughly enjoyed you as a guest, man. I can't wait till you come back again, okay? Can't wait, too. All right, man. This has been Expeditiously. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.